I hosted a vote on Patreon to see what they wanted to see covered next. And this was the result of that poll. So we're gonna be covering a little bit of procedural modeling here, and then we're also going to dive into some vellum inflation. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can recreate this scene from scratch. So like I said, this was a vote on Patreon. So if you're interested in joining in on future polls, if I ever host them to see what video is going to be posted next, then go ahead and jump on over there. Also, we'll have these project files available. So if you wanna take a look at those before most likely I get to all of these videos, then go ahead and take a look at that and grab those project files and dive into the scene here. But let's go ahead and just remake this. So we're gonna make this procedurally modeled little container here for our balloon that we're gonna inflate inside of it. Um, this kind of looks sort of like a undersea mine to me. I don't know, kind of a weird abstract shape, but let's go ahead and procedural model that just to get it out of the way and it gets some nice procedural modeling to uh, practice. So let's drop in a sphere. We're gonna set this from a polygon mesh to a polygon. We're gonna set the frequency up to like 30, to give us a nice smooth sphere here. Then we're gonna scatter some points on it. We'll set the count down quite a bit. We'll set this to like 15 or so. Let's see, we got these points now. If I disable this grid, see we got our points in. Let's bring that back. And then from there, we want to randomize the scale of our spheres that we're gonna be copying on here. So we need to create an attribute randomized in order to do that. We'll set it equal to P scale and make it a one dimensional uh, value. And then we're gonna set this from 1.5 to like 2.5, should be good. We're gonna drop in our copy to points and then we'll drop a sphere down as well. Let's go ahead and wire those on in. This is way too big to start off with, so let's go ahead and just, actually let's change this from polygon mesh to a polygon. We'll change the frequency to like 15, and then we'll scale it down. Maybe, hold on, let's template our sphere here so we can see what we got. Uh, maybe something like that. Gives us a nice randomization of our sizes and a good distribution of points along our surface here to cut holes into our mesh. So let's drop a Boolean down. Let's untemplate our sphere and wire those on up. Then we need to change some settings in this Boolean. So we wanna keep the first as a solid. So our spheres we just copied, we're gonna use those as a cutting surface to cut the surface of the second object. So we need that to be a surface. And then we're going to subtract B from A in order to cut those holes out. Now we're gonna to need to fill these back in. So we'll drop in a polyfill, polyfill. And we'll set that to a single polygon. So we're gonna take these individual little patches that we just created. We're going to put them in a group just by selecting that patch group. And we're going to get rid of everything but those patches. So we'll set the blast down and we'll delete non-selected with the group set to that patch group that we just created. Now the reason that we're doing this is because we wanna create those little extrusions that we're going to then merge back together with our sphere that we just cut holes in. So we want to just drop down a poly extrude to give us some thickness here and we can play around with this here in just a second. Let's go ahead and leave it as that. Let's output the back. And we're also gonna need every single one of these groups. So let's go ahead and just enable all of those as well. So like I said, we're going to take these individual pieces that we've created here. We're going to shape them and then we're going to merge them back together and fuse them back onto the sphere that we cut holes into. So we can do this with a for each connected piece. We're going through each connected piece because we want to take the, basically we're gonna take this face and we're going to kind of scale it down and then we're going to affect the sides of the geometry here. But 
we can't just do that straight up. We're going to actually have to get rid of those sides first. So we'll drop down a last node. We're going to set this to extrude side and that should be good for that. So that gets rid of the side for us. Now we need to take these top portions of our, our pieces and we're gonna scale those down. So we'll do a transform from centroid. And we wanna set the group equal to the extrude front, I believe, and just scale that down. And that gives us a nice little scale to the, uh, to the front of our, our objects here. And we need to bring the sides back now. The way that we're gonna do that is using a poly bridge. And we need to do a few things in this poly bridge. First and foremost, we need to give it some divisions. So we'll set it to like seven or so. And then we need to specify a source and a destination group. So our source group is going to be the extrude back seam and the destination is going to be the extrude front seam. So we're going to basically just bridge the gap between those two groups, which is all good there. But we wanna shape this. We wanna actually create, we don't want this to be just like a straight line between the two groups. We wanna give it some shape, some character. So we're gonna come over to this bridge and we're gonna come down to this thickness ramp. We're gonna add a third point and you can see that we start to get some stuff going on, but it is kind of a harsh, harsh edge, which I don't really like. So let's select all three of these points and set them to a bezier. And that gives us a nice little fall off here. Let's just select that middle point here. Just move that around a little bit. You can do whatever you want with this, but I'm gonna just give it a nice kind of smooth gradient between the two. Give us a nice little bevel type thing going on there. And then that is pretty much all we need to do with those. We now just need to get rid of the fronts and backs here. So we'll do a blast one more time. And we'll do, let's see, extrude back and extrude front. Because we only want to have, uh, we want to have a hole in these basically. So. We'll have that just ready for our mesh here to be fused back together. And then let's drop down a clean because we have all this groups and stuff going on that we don't want, but we do need to do one thing in this clean node and that is uncheck this removed generative primitives because you can see that that pokes some holes in our mesh, which doesn't look very good and is gonna make it a little hard to fuse things back together. I'm a dummy and forgot to also check this remove attributes, make sure you do that or that won't do anything. Uh, this clean node will basically be useless. So just make sure you check that remove attributes and don't be like me. So let's go ahead and take a merge node. Wire that up. We're going to take our poly extrude. So, or sorry, not our poly extrude, but our poly fill here. So this one right here, we're going to bring this out and bring it down bring it down and wire this into our merge. But we want to get rid of those patches here. So let's just get rid of those patches and wire in our clean. And now you can see that we have created basically what we're looking to, we were looking to do. And if I just, let's see, if I get rid of that, you can see that they are perfectly the same size as the objects that we cut out because we used that the patch group that we created and everything should line up now. So we can just drop in a fuse and everything should fuse back together. Super nice, we no longer have a bunch of points on top of each other like we do there. So there's double points you can kind of tell right here. I turn that back on see they merge all together and it looks super good. The mesh isn't too bad in terms of topology, but I just want to clean that up. And my favorite way to 
or just remesh stuff is not using the remesh node, but using the exocide quad remesher. I cannot specify how much I love this uh, this little node here. And let's turn off auto cook. You'd think I would have learned the first time. Stop it. Turn off auto cook. <laughs> let's set the adaptive size up and the adaptive adaptive quad count. Let's set this to like I don't know thirty thousand or something. Just give it a bunch of resolution. Give it a second here and it should give us a nice clean mesh. Take a look. It does take just a second to calculate, but this I think this is the same one that's used in uh, ZBrush and it works flawlessly. See we have nice clean mesh here with these nice little gradients that we have moving across our, our mesh. Maybe extruded it up a little bit too much. So we could correct that if we want, but let's go ahead and drop down a poly extrude. And we can give this just a little bit of thickness here. It's a little too much, maybe like point, just like point 0.1. Yeah, that should be good. And let's output our back. And now we have our nice little mesh procedurally modded, modeled. Super, super clean. And now that I'm looking at it, I kind of don't like the size of these holes. So let's go ahead and just show the power of our proceduralism. And let's just make those a little bigger. So let's set this to like, I don't know, 0.14. Sure. That's looking good. And that gives us a little bit better. And I didn't like, let's see, I didn't like how much these stuck out. So let's set the poly extrude back a little bit, maybe like 0.35. Sure. That looks a little bit better in my opinion. And then we can just recook this. Get our nice clean mesh back. You can use a remesh node if you really want, but I prefer the quad remesher. Like I said, just gives it a little bit better results. It's a fantastic tool, not too expensive, and I use it all the time. And that gives us our nice clean mesh. And again, kind of don't like how thick that is. So let's set that to not that much, 8.15. And that gives us nice clean mesh. That would be how I went about procedurally modeling this little object here again i kind of don't like the way this turned out but you can take a look at my settings that i did like in this example here if you want uh, if you grab the project files so grab those if you're interested but in the next video we'll take a look at how we can go about creating the balloon setup so I'll just play this real quick Let's see Got this little balloon starting out in the middle of the object here and it inflates out and goes all squish through the holes. So we'll do two different setups with this. I have one that it goes out quite a bit here. It's a little bit more stretchy. And then I also have one here that just kind of goes out a little bit and kind of sticks out the holes just a tiny little bit. And we're also gonna cover how we can get this nice movement of our object here. Let's just disable that. Let's just take a look at, nope, not that. Actually, I will need these. Let's just take a look at this. So it plays a little bit faster, but how we can get this nice smooth movement of our mesh just kind of jiggling around using some chop net. So uh, it's a little interesting but it's kind of complex thing to get working well. Anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. Like I said, we'll cover those vellum inflation as well as this nice little movement that we got going on in the next video. We got a couple different types of inflation to take a look at. So 
take a look at Patreon if you're interested to grab these project files. You can access that before the second part of this video will probably come out if you want to get that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I have a bunch of other videos on my channel if you want to learn more about Houdini and how to do different things inside Houdini. I also have some stuff on Redshift if you're interested in learning more about Redshift inside Houdini. Or just Redshift in general, it pretty much applies to any software that Redshift is uh, capable of running in. So anyways, like I said, thank you guys for watching. Check out those videos if you're interested and have a good day.